in New York. Good evening as we come on the air in the West tonight and we begin tonight with the stunning collapse in Afghanistan. Late today for the first time President Biden addressing the American people saying I stand squarely behind my decision but saying the truth is this did unfold more quickly than we anticipated saying Afghan leaders gave up that the Afghan military collapsed. But tonight, major questions about how U.S. intelligence, how the president's national security team did not see this coming. The Taliban in control of Kabul. It was sweeping and swift, taking a little more than a week to seize several large cities and the country. Thousands of Afghans desperate to get out, some seen chasing a U.S. military plane, a C-17, as it was taxiing for takeoff, climbing onto the plane. There are reports tonight several people fell from the plane and that some did not survive. Thousands more running toward the airport amid gunfire, and tonight the Taliban now in control of the only road in. This family scaling the wall, climbing around barbed wire, pulling up a little girl with her backpack. Taliban fighters are now patrolling the streets of the capital and in control in the presidential palace after Afghanistan's president fled the country. President Biden before the camera saying he is deeply saddened by the facts on the ground, the images the world now seeing, but saying, I do not regret my decision asking how many more American lives and adding, I will not repeat the mistakes made in the past, saying the events unfolding reinforce it was time to get out and adding that Americans should not be fighting a war that the Afghans, he says, aren't willing to fight themselves. But there remain so many questions tonight. The U.S. military working throughout the day today to secure the airport. Tonight, the scene there at the airport and the U.S. now promising to get tens of thousands out of that country. Our senior foreign correspondent, Ian Panel, leading us off tonight from Kabul. Tonight, the panic, chaos and desperation at the Kabul airport, then forced to shut down. Thousands of Afghans crowding onto the runway, surrounding this massive C-17 military jet, some clinging to the side of the fuselage. Horrifying local reports saying people could be seen falling from the plane as it took off. The despair at the airport, overwhelming. Throngs of people swarming up the walkway, trying to board one flight. Forcing themselves inside another, the pilots unable to take off in the chaos. This disturbing video even showing a child being pulled aboard, hanging by that rope. This image obtained by Defence One showing hundreds of people packed inside one plane. Barbed wire separating the airport from the desperate masses stranded outside. Dozens climbing the walls onto the airfield. At least seven people killed in the chaos. At one point, gunfire erupting on the tarmac. Officials confirming US troops shot and killed at least two armed men as thousands streamed onto the runway and at least one US military service member injured. US troops forced to hold their ground at gunpoint. The Taliban announcing they're now in full control. 20 years of American and NATO-led gains collapsing in stunning fashion in just a matter of days. Armed checkpoints around the city, the Taliban now separating foreigners from locals. Militants seizing control of the main route to the airport, only allowing foreigners through. Just five weeks ago, the president was adamant that a complete Taliban takeover was unlikely. The likelihood there's going to be the Taliban overrunning everything and owning the whole country is highly unlikely. But under growing pressure to address the unfolding crisis, President Biden today saying he stands by his decision. I stand squarely behind my decision. After 20 years, I've learned the hard way that there was never a good time to withdraw U.S. forces. The truth is, this did unfold more quickly than we had anticipated. And on the images now seen around the world, Afghans holding on to that C-17, scaling the airport walls, the president acknowledged how difficult it is to watch. I am president of the United States of America, and the buck stops with me. I'm deeply saddened by the facts we now face, but I do not regret my decision. American troops cannot and should not be fighting in a war and dying in a war that Afghan forces are not willing to fight for themselves. And this is the new reality tonight. 
Images from Al Jazeera seen around the world showing Taliban fighters inside the presidential palace, triumphantly declaring the restoration of the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan. The militants sweeping through major cities in a week. Afghan President Ashraf Ghani, likely in an effort to save his own life, fleeing the country he vowed to protect, claiming in a Facebook post he wanted to save Kabul from bloodshed. Tonight, the president signing off on deploying at least 6,000 troops to the region, assisting the emergency evacuation of almost all U.S. personnel, American citizens and thousands of Afghans who supported the U.S.-led mission. For a time, black smoke seen rising from the U.S. embassy. Embassy staffers ordered to destroy sensitive equipment and documents, especially those containing images of the American flag that could be used as propaganda. The Taliban are out in force. You see them at different checkpoints around the city. But we've been driving for five minutes, and what's really noticeable is we haven't seen one woman out on the streets. But tonight, already chilling new reports of mounting human rights abuses against women and girls. Many concerned the freedoms gained over the last 20 years in education and the workplace now in jeopardy. We visited this school for girls in April. My wish is to raise the woman voice. What really I want is to be a very uh, well-known journalist. I will go for an interview in front of the boss. And if he asks me that, uh, what is the main reason, what is the main wish that you hear, I would tell him that I want to sit in that chair that right now you're sitting. I really want that. But tonight, in a country where women leaders have only just been welcomed, they now fear for their lives. For sure, I'm afraid of myself, my life, and my, my freedom to work and my freedom to speak up. These are the things that I'm afraid, afraid of losing them. And these are very real fears tonight. Ian with us from Kabul again this evening. And Ian, I wanted to go back to these evacuations now planned uh, at the airport. We know there's only one main road to the airport. The U.S. says it's prepared to transport uh, 30,000 people out of the country, American personnel and Afghans who helped the United States. But how do you get these thousands of people past Taliban checkpoints? Uh, can this be done safely? And what is the status of the airport tonight? Yeah, David, at the moment, I can't say I see a workable plan at all. Many of those who risk their lives to help us are simply afraid to go out of their houses. And even if they do, there's one road into the airport, there's a Taliban checkpoint there, and they're only letting foreigners through. Meanwhile, we can hear those planes back in the sky. The airport has reopened, but this is still far from over.